just thrilled to be able to come and be with you here at Lone Star. Uh, it hasn't been that long since I've been here, but this past year has, with me shut in, has seemed like an eternity. So y'all just don't know, understand how glad I am to see you. I'm sort of like a bird out of prison. I just, I can't shut up, I can't catch up, and I can't shut up. I can. I told some of them that don't worry. On a Sunday afternoon, I know everybody's real tired, ready to go get their afternoon nap, so I promised I wouldn't preach an over an hour and 45 minute sermonette. So, uh, get y'all all stirred up. It, no, it is good to be here. Church has been much in prayer for you. I realize you're going into the revival. I pray that we can hear of great results from it. Um, with if it's all right with everybody, I'd just rather uh, get the thought the Lord has on my heart off first and get through invitation and then give a, a report. The report will be the shortest thing today. But a short message would be on our heart. It's one that, I've, as far as I can remember, I've ever one time before used this scripture. Uh, with all seriousness, it would be probably about the shortest sermon you've ever heard me preach. I want to be very pointed, I want to be very direct, and I don't want to add to it nor take away from it. Uh, the Lord knows uh, what the message is needed for, He knows who it's for. If you have your Bibles, I would like for you to turn with me to the book of Exodus in chapter 21. The book of Exodus in chapter 21, this be dealing uh, with uh, the giving of the laws and uh, this is going to sound maybe like a really strange way uh, to get started. It may not seem like it's going to make sense. Uh, just bear it with us. And we we'll use this as a platform for the thought that the Lord has on our heart. Now, in, I'm just going to start reading in verse 1 of Exodus 21. It said, Now these are the judgments which thou shalt set before them. If thou buy a Hebrew servant... Six years he shall serve, and in the seventh he shall go out free for nothing. If he came in by himself, he shall go out by himself. If he were married, then his wife shall go out with him. If his master had given him a wife, and she have borne him sons or daughters, the wife and her children shall be her masters, and he shall go out by himself. And if... Now, I want to pause here for just a second realize we're dealing with something that we don't deal with here today. It was very common in that time, and God even made provision uh, for those that would be in servitude. Uh, not going to focus on that side of it, but I, I want you to just uh, get your mind wrapped around what it would be to be able to be set free and choose not to. And this is what we're dealing with, as we had read this, if uh, he wasn't married when he uh, went in, and uh, he married while he was in servitude, uh, he, he could be free, but those he loved would not be. Now, I'm going to say this, that would be a very tough uh, position to be in. Husbands, I want you to think about this, uh, the love of your life, and uh, you have the little youngins, and uh, they the twinkle in your eye, and you have the opportunity that, that your time is up, that you, you could go footloose and fancy free, and yet those you love couldn't. Now, I, I want to get that established in your mind. These men that he was applying this to and giving this to, the families, the wife and the children under these conditions could not go free. They could not deliver themselves that there, there's going to be an option and I'm thankful this afternoon that I can stand and I can preach that Jesus Christ chose me I'm thankful that he gave me an option I'm glad that he didn't abandon me when I couldn't help myself I want you to think about this if his master have given him a wife, and we had read this, I want you to get down with me into verse 5, and if. Now, that, that's two little words, but they're very big words in this context. And if the servant 
shall plainly say, I love my master, my wife, and my children. Now notice how it's put here. If the servant says, I. Now, this is going to take more than just words. That this is going to be a proof with the action. And as we look at this, this last part, this individual is making a conscious decision. I will not go out free. Now, won't you think about it? He could have, but he's made a choice for love's sake. I want you to read with me in verse 6. Then his master shall bring him unto the judges. He shall also bring him to the door, or unto the doorpost. And his master shall bore his ear through with an oil, and he shall serve him forever. So he, he, he had the option that to go free, leave those he loved, or he had an option, and that option was going to cost him something. That what this is with the oil and the ear on the doorpost or, or, or the door, and I, 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 it just makes me cringe just to think about that going on, uh, is a good thing I am not a woman because I could not have my ears pierced. I, that, ugh, it just makes me quiver. But you think about having your earlobe backed up, and I imagine somebody had that thing stretched out, and you got this big old uh, uh, thing, and you go, oh, had to get a hammer and just gore that thing out. But it was necessary because it was an identifying mark that it's forever settled that this man made the choice to not leave those he loved. You say, well, if somebody did that for me, that would be outstanding. I want you to listen to me. If you're here and you're lost, there is one that has done more than that. He's had more than his uh, hole bore in his ear. He bore in his body uh, the marks that we could go free. Then I want you to think about, if you turn with me in your Bibles to Isaiah chapter 53, that he starts out... Uh, with a question, and I'm just going to uh, pounce on it and move on. Uh, and the question is, who hath believed our report? Uh, now, I'm going to say this very plainly, uh, that I'm satisfied. I mean, there could be some instances, but people that have been brought to church all their life, I'm satisfied that if a person is saved, they know they're saved. Uh, and I'm just as positive that if a person is lost, they know they're lost. Uh, and the shame is not being lost. The shame is staying lost. Uh, I, I, I know your former pastor well. I know Brother Trent very well. I know where they stand. I know what they preach. So I know you have heard the truth uh, that Jesus is the Christ. Uh, but the question I want to ask you, uh, have you believed uh, that report? You might say, well, I believe it's so. Uh, if you believe it, why in the world wouldn't you act on it? Uh, until you act on it, uh, and you can say you believe it all you want to, uh, but there needs to be more than just words. There needs to be action. Uh, and I'm going to ask you, do you believe the report that Jesus uh, is the Christ, that He is uh, the Savior. Uh, before we leave here in a few minutes, I want you to be absolutely uh, convinced uh, uh, of what He did and that He did more uh, uh, than anybody else. I want you to think about this lost person. Uh, I go back in my mind and I think about when Christ was uh, in the garden and He was praying. Uh, if you don't think that He was in great agony, you better go study that thing out again. Uh, uh, that it was awful for Him. He had a load. Uh, and what his prayer was, if it's thy will, let this cup pass from me. I want you to think about that, sinner friend. Our Lord and Savior was praying to the Father, if it's thy will, let this cup pass from me. 
But he went a little further. He said, nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. I hope this evening that you are thankful uh, that he prayed, not my will, but thine be done. Christ knew what lay ahead of him. He knew uh, the agony. He knew uh, uh, in full detail, uh, um, for goodness gracious, uh, he grew the tree that he hung on uh, for you. I mean, none of this is possible uh, without Christ, uh, but Christ made a choice. Uh, are you listening? And I don't want y'all to get mad and throw tomatoes at me. I'm not out of context. But Brother Trent, just as sure as I'm standing here, Christ made a choice uh, to fulfill the will uh, of the Father uh, because of the love of God or us uh, that were in bondage and there was no way uh, we could deliver ourselves. Uh, so Christ took on the form of man and came uh, and died for our stead. I want you to think about that. That's amazing. That should get everybody excited what he has done. What you think about is he was walking up Calvary's road. He didn't quit. We sing the song, y'all may not, I know it was in the old great gospel hymns book and everybody used to sing it. He could have called 10,000 angels. He could have, but he didn't. I'm glad he didn't. I'm glad he chose to die to pay a debt he didn't owe because it was a price I could not ever pay. That is the love of God. What he went through wasn't easy. I think a lot of times we romanticize the crucifixion. Y'all, that was a horrible event. Christ felt every bit of it. He did it. Because there was nobody else that could. And he didn't leave you and me stranded. This afternoon, because of what he did, you have an option. And I want you to think and consider and weigh the consequences of that option in great detail before you leave here today. I want you to listen as we come a little bit further down in Isaiah chapter 53. The first part of verse 4, and I'm going to have to do a lot of running to uh, not be too lengthy. He said in verse 4, Surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Y'all, you, you can say what you want to, but that's love. There is no other way around it. Christ was viewing us as that man that did not want to leave those he loved by themselves in servitude. He, why did that man, why would a man choose to say, because he, he was there to be a, a guide, he was there to be a protector. I want you to listen to you. Uh, Christ wants to be your savior, but he's also a guide or he's a provider, he is a protector. Uh, He's the great shepherd. Let's go up down in verse 10. Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. Boss person, let me tell you something. And I don't take what I'm fixing to say out of context. Christ did more than back up to a doorpost and have an awl put through his ear. He backed up to a cross and hung between heaven and earth to pay the debt for you. He chose to do that. The question I want to ask you is why in the world would you choose to reject him? Because there's no love like the love of God. God wants you to experience His love today. He wants to experience His deliverance. Said a friend, I want you to experience Christ Jesus today. That would be the best thing that's ever happened to you. 
I want you to listen as we go a little further. And this is, yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him and to put him to grief. When thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin, he shall see his seed, he shall prolong his days, uh, and the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. He shall see the travail of his soul uh, and shall be satisfied. By his knowledge shall my righteous surfeit be uh, justified many, for he shall bear their iniquities. Didn't even read the verse where he said, and by his stripes we are healed. Has anybody else done that for you? Comes down to the last part uh, of verse 12. He said he was numbered with the transgressors. And he bare the sin of many and made intercession for the transgressors. I want to ask you this simple question. What more do you want out of uh, the Lord? I haven't gone into great detail. I've tried to stick right here. But Brother Steve, there's enough gospel being preached here today to save the entire world if they would just listen. Certainly it's enough to save you if you will listen and respond. Not to me but the invitation of the Lord. What Christ did was not pleasant. It wasn't for fame and glory. He did it because of love. And I know I've made that statement several times, but I want it to just really get real to you. God loves you. Some of y'all look to me like I've lost my mind. I'm going to make that statement again. God loves you. You put your name in that blank. You may be asking, well, why does God love me? I promise you, I don't have a clue. But I sure am glad he does. All my life I was told I had a face that only a mama could love. God loved me too. And I'm glad. God loves you in spite of your sin. God loves you in spite of your helplessness. God loves you in spite of all. Am I making an ounce of sense? That's how much God loves you. And He could have left you hanging, but He didn't. He backed it all up freely because of love. I want you to flip with me to one more scripture. This, most of us could quote this frontwards and backwards. Hebrews chapter 12, and in verse 2, and I'm going to jump down into the verse, and I love this. He said, Who for the joy that was set before him endured... Brother Trent, that word endured has a great deep depth of meaning. He endured it. Why did Christ endure the cross? Because He didn't want to leave you enslaved. He didn't want to leave you in bondage. He took your place so that you could be set free. What I'm saying today, I know you've heard a hundred or more times in your life. But I'm glad that truth has never changed, and it never will. 
And my prayer is that today is the day that you'll hear it like you've never heard it before. What Christ went through, there, it, he felt every bit of it. He endured the cross, despising the shame. You know what he did? He died a transgressor's death. Not just a transgressor's death, a crucifixion was for the worst of the worst. And he was totally innocent. Anybody else done that for you? And this sweet part is the end. Lost person, I want you to listen to me. And is. Current, present tense. And is. Notice it didn't say and was. And is. Set down at the right hand of the throne of God. Well, Brother Eddie, what in the world is he doing there? He's waiting on you to trust him. He's waiting on you to believe the report that he willingly bore the shame, he paid the debt. He hung on the cross, and it wasn't the nails that held him there. It was his love. Because he don't want to leave you stranded. This afternoon, lost person, is the pressure on you? You feel like you're drowning? Feel all those things that you feel like when you're under confusion. You say, well, Brother Eddie, how did you know that? I, I was where you was at one time. Let me tell you something. Brother Trent was there one time. Oh, everybody else has been saved. We've been there. But hallelujah, we ain't there no more. And you don't have to be there any longer. Somebody willingly... I want that to sink in. Willingly chose to take your place. All of y'all know Brother Trent and I real close, and we pick and we cut up and we carry on. There's been a few times, and I believe it or not, we do get serious. And we don't play in the ministry. I want you to know that. And there have been times I needed Brother Trent. Brother Trent, I'm glad you made time for me. I needed you. There have been times that Brother Trent needed me. I'm thankful I made time for you, Brother. I, that, 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 that's wonderful to have. If I was a person this afternoon, I believe Brother Trent has time for you. I promise you, I have time for you. But me and Brother Trent together cannot do a thing for you like God. And he has time for you this afternoon. Aren't you tired of tote that low? You don't have to. Because somebody loved you. I want to ask this simple question. Do you understand somebody loves you? And his name is Jesus. He didn't just say he loved you. He proved he loved you. And we're coming back, to, or as we come to a close, to the beginning. Have you believed that report?
Some of y'all look like y'all hunkered down for a, one of the Brother Eddie long-winded sermons. I'm about done. I told you it's going to be short. But y'all, how simple is this? It's time to get to the point. The point is you lost, you need to be saved. The point is, is that there's one who paid the debt and he's waiting to forgive you. The debt's already paid, all right? It's done. It's a done deal. He's just waiting on you. Now, I'm going to tell you something. Lost person, I love you and I would do a whole lot for you. But if Brother Lane and some of them had said, all right, Brother, you back up to that wood door. We fixed a bunch of hole in your... I ain't doing it for you. You hear me? I ain't doing it for you. I love you. I ain't doing it for you. Because it wouldn't accomplish a thing. But what Christ accomplished is worth it. I want to ask you honestly, what are you waiting on? He's waiting on you. You don't have to wait on him. Lost person, mark it down. Brother Eddie can preach a short message. But in a short message, you've heard the truth. And you need to believe the report. As we stand and sing anything on your heart, we'd invite you to come.